few things to clear up about outliers and regression. One, it's not a good rule to remove any outlier without examining those points in the context of the data. Two, students often mistake univariate outliers for regression outliers. Three, not all large residuals are outliers. We make the distinction between a univariate outlier and a regression outlier. Univariate outliers are taught early on in an introductory stats course. For continuous variables, they may be identified from univariate plots such as a box plot or histogram. A regression outlier is identified with respect to a model. That is, you need to fit a model first before you can begin to identify outliers. In regression analysis, some authors used outlier to refer to all points that appear unusual, as in Fox. Others, like Weisberg, make the distinction that some unusual points legitimately belong to the data and some do not. Those that do not belong are called outliers. Confusion comes when students mix these two points of view, so listen carefully to how your professor uses the term. In Fox's view, outliers should not be automatically deleted without investigating the point in the context of the data. In Weisberg's view, outliers do not belong to the data process so are deleted. Bear this in mind as we go through the presentation as I flip between the two. Mainly I shall adopt the second view. Here's an example where a univariate outlier is not a regression outlier. Look at this box plot for y. There is a value labelled a that is far from the main mass of points and suggests it's an outlier. Now here's a scatter plot of y versus x. The same point a is far from the others. But if we fitted a line by regressing y on x, point a is not a regression outlier as the point is un not unusual because it's not far above or below the line. Recall the line relates x to y. Now if we had thrown out point a before the regression, we would have chucked out relevant information. This example used the simple linear regression, but the same goes for multiple regression. Look at these two scatter plots of y versus x. The one on the left has an unusual point on the far left. Think about the regression line with and without the point. Would there be a big difference in the line? Yes, there would. The coefficient of the intercept and slope would change to ensure the sum of residuals equals zero. This point would be flagged as influential using popular measures of influence based on changes in parameter estimates such as Cook's distance. Now the plot on the right has an unusual point at x is 5.5. Now think about the line with and without the point. In this case, the line does not change much and the point is far from the fitted line. Such a point increases uncertainty in parameter estimates. The variance of the residuals goes up, thus increasing the parameter standard errors, and the adjusted R square goes down. The thing is, this point is an outlier that would not be flagged as influential using Cook's distance. Detection. As you may well recall from your stats class, you examine residual plots to find possible regression outliers. It's easier to spot large residuals by looking at some scaled version of the residuals. The names for the scale residuals aren't standard across all software and texts. There are several ways to scale the residuals. Here I list the two that are better than the others. Studentized residual has nicer stats properties than the standardized one, so just go for that every time. In large samples, however, standardized and studentized are practically the same. If you spot several large residuals and reckon they're all outliers, I suggest you deal with them in a sequential manner. Remove the largest, refit, and see how the output changes. A common mistake is to class all large residuals as outliers to be deleted. An observation that may seem unusual may be actually a natural part of the data. Removal of all large residuals will make it wrongly appear that the form of the relationship between y and the x's is more precise than is true. Supposing the error is normally distributed, removing all large residuals would be truncating, i.e. cutting off the tails of the distribution so it would no longer be normal. Managing outliers we now know it's wrong to automatically remove all observations with large residuals. Our decision is to either drop or keep an observation with a large residual, or we might be undecided. Unfortunately, the choice of action we are faced with is not limited to a few things, so my list is quite long. It's clear-cut when to drop and subjective between options 2 and 3, so use judgement. Let's recognise there's not necessarily one right thing to do, and each person will have their own opinion when presented with the same output. And different opinions lead to different models. That's okay, because more than one model for the same data could be equally acceptable because models are approximation to the relationship between y and x's and who is to say one model is better approximation than the others when no one can really see what the true model is unless it's artificial data simulated by a professor for an assignment. Comments on the suggestions listed. By specifying the model I mean keeping the same dependent variable but making a change to the set of x's and or 
transformations of y or x, or both. In one, I mention about observation not belong to a population. For example, suppose your data is taken from men only, then observations from women do not belong to this population. In two, I mention about the GLM, stands for Generalized Linear Models. This class of regression model where the error term need not be normally distributed. The logistic regression newbies see on a modeling course an example of GLM. In summary, to get regression outliers you need a model, and so outlying observations in one model may not be outlying observations in another for Y. In dealing with observations with larger residuals, judgment is needed so not everyone will agree on what to do. If outliers are present, they should only make up a tiny proportion of the data. You may get lucky and find there are no outliers for your model. If you delete an outlier refit and find more outliers, and these outlying observations form a cluster, it suggests your initial model was bad to start with. A related topic is influential observations. These distort the output much more than the outliers that are not influential, so you should definitely look for these first. Watch my video on it to learn more.